So again, yeah, we pretty technical, I think. Um, it'll be a little bit dry too because I'm. I don't know why, but uh, I, just, I just the things I have in to to um, show you are things that are pretty basic things like a movie player and time base, like as a timeline um, a component. Um, it's, it's mostly kind of infrastructure kind of things as opposed to the more art oriented things that uh, you guys make. But, um, but I had, because I was working on these recently, I want to show them to you. Um, so, um, yeah, a little bit of custom, talk about custom parameters and then uh, something I um, call internal parameters. Can you do that okay? Yeah. Um, which is a variant on custom parameters, which I kind of discovered as a technique, but I use it all the time now, so I just want to show that to you. Um, how I use extensions, because I was a latecomer in using extensions at derivative, but I, I, I like them, but in a limited way. And then the timer chop, a few things uh, that it's good for, uh, outside of what you see in the snippets. Um, and then this other timeline component, um, it, uh, I want to talk a little bit about opfind and using the parameter component, and making UIs with that. Um, and so on. So let's uh, let's uh, start from the beginning. So um, let's bring up my topal and which is this one? Is this one? Yeah. The first thing I do when I start a project is uh, I use parent shortcuts. So uh, let's make a base here and. Um, Yeah, so um, I, I go right to the common page, and it could be it could be any kind of component. But if there's a particular function that this component will serve, let's say effect, it's an effect. I say that I create a parent shortcut as that name, uh, capital letter, letter starting with capital letter. That's just a convention that we're following at um, a derivative for our newer work for parent shortcuts, and so it, this allows me to get at everything inside this component. Uh, easily, no matter where you are inside the component, it's just a shorthand. So um, uh, let's go inside base and create a subcomponent called uh, sub. And uh, oh yeah, so I want to first then put a custom parameter on the top. To right click, click on base one, uh, go to customize component, make a new page called control. And um, speed, make a new parameter called speed as a float. And uh, it's here it is. Okay, so I want to access speed from anywhere within the component. And um, there's a bunch of ways. People typically use parent bracket or parent one bracket or two bracket or whatever. So um, the parent shortcut method is simpler. Okay, so if we go inside here. Um, so let's say we want to go way deep here and we want to get out that parameter at the top, so I uh, create a, let's say, evaluate that. So very often um, to test Python expressions, just in general, just to test it, I use the evaluate data a lot because I can just put an expression in and it'll <coughs> give me results and I can evolve expressions from here and then grab the expression and stick it somewhere else. So it's kind of like a bit of a testing ground. So um, the way I get it is uh, parent dot effect dot um, part dot uh, speed. Right, so that's, that's the concise way of getting a parent uh, shortcut. Um, so yeah, sure I could use parent like this. Mm, oh, error is how many? Two, three, uh, two, okay. So it's, it, it also, having it, the name here it identifies really what component it's in and what, it's, what purpose it serves. Parent 2 doesn't tell you anything, but parent dot effect, it's really part of the effect thing and it's good for just uh, readability. Um, and then, um, so here's uh, probably something that you don't know about because it's in the experimental of Touch Designer. Uh, the 3,000 version, 30,000 version. Um, you can click on, right click on any part of your path up here and get your menu up, which let, lets you get 
the parameters or the viewer from a few levels up. So you don't have to navigate there and open it. You can just do it via uh, clicking on any of the elements of the path. Someone will look at parameters there, so that's where I can grab the speed and see where it's, that change, it's changing here. Okay. So, um, oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to show you too, and I hope you know this as well, um, if you just highlight a part of the expression and roll over, it should <laughs> give me a value. Oh, right, I know why. It's because it has to be a real evaluating expression. Yeah. If you just go over this part and, yeah, highlight a part of the expression, it'll evaluate that part and tell you, oh, I am, I am a base component slash base. So you can reverse engineer expressions by highlighting portions of them and then building up to larger and larger. So that's the component, TD base comp. Highlight up to there is, is the parameters of slash base, right? And then, of course, the whole thing is the value of that. So um, I use that a lot to kind of, um, again, reverse engineer uh, my expressions and others as well. Okay. Um, Okay, so that's, that's it for uh, parent shortcuts. And you see uh, this form being used uh, in so many places and what, what I'm about to show you. Um, there's also, um, and uh, Jared and I have been in there talk about um, uh, widgets and stuff uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, they're gonna go into not just uh, parent shortcuts, but also global op shortcuts. So parent shortcuts are for stuff inside a component and Google Ops Shortcut is for accessing things from outside and uh, via a notation called op dot Google Shortcut and they'll show that to you but it's also in the documentation under in the wiki just type in Google Ops Shortcut or something. Um, okay so let's go on to uh, a bit of a recap of um, uh, the, the data in Touch Designer so um, yeah, so where we put that in Touch Designer, recap of it. Okay, so um, this is a bit of leading you to where I'm gonna, where I'm gonna talk about custom parameters a lot. Um, so this is a kind of a, some examples of where you, we put data in Touch Designer. A lot of the data of Touch Designer is from outside files, images, all the stuff that's out there. Um, this is a, pulling up a CSV file, that kind of thing. So, I'm not going to talk about external files here so much. I'm talking about more in where do you put data when you're trying to put temporary variables here and there and sprinkle them about. So up to now, we've been using tables a lot to stash data in a component, and uh, whether it's tables or text. Um, often people put um, values in the uh, constant shop. They use a bit of Python or T script to um, run uh, expression, run run Python to set a value, so you actually store the value in in a um, in a parameter. So so this is more of the legacy type of uh, um, parameters. So run script and set it there and all that. So I, I'm sure you do a lot of this if, if you've been using touches on a lot. So I say I don't want to put uh, my values in a table. Maybe I'll stick it in a constant job. Uh, same thing goes with an add a job. You're putting values and parameters to get the, this is the data for geometry, not sure. Uh, in the case of the animation component, uh, you, um, for, uh, not for animation curves, you, the data is actually stored inside the animation component in a data as well, so the keyframes are in, in the animation component, these are the keyframes. So again, it's using that to store data. Um, so it's quite powerful as a medium for it. Um, you can also uh, store data in, if you lock data, you can edit things directly using a model, or in this case, the pattern, uh, a chop that is locked, you can go in and uh, change the values by hand. I think brought a tool, something like, like this. Uh, forget how to do it. Anyway. Um, and also, um, right, you can just 
stored via, within Python expressions that uh, generate, um, in this case, it's uh, storage. Okay, so storage is um, every node can have storage, it's Python storage, it's a dictionary of stuff, and you need to uh, store um, value, name, and um, let's pull up the text board. I'll just pull the text board to uh, see what's going on. And um, so, yeah, so this stores, um, I'm going to run the script. Yeah, so it's, it's stuck the, these values into storage, and uh, then you fetch it into a Python variable, then I print it, and then I print all of storage, which is this thing here, which is uh, a dictionary of uh, uh, name and value. So that's another place to store uh, data, the whole data in touch is iron. The disadvantage of it is it's not very visible. You need to use a, well this is an exam in that you can't see it here, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit complicated as you, uh, your data gets more and more um, uh, complex. And you can't just go in here and type in new values. You have to do it through Python. So that's a bit of a disadvantage for using um, storage, but it, it does support all of Python functionality, data types and stuff. Um, so another place to store data is in extensions. So when I um, when I create an extension um, via the uh, let's just do it here component base, then I go to extensions and uh, so I component and I say create me an extension called hello and prepare and add a standard one. So this this creates an extension in base one. Um, called hello, if you go inside, it create, it's created a, a dash for you, and in the dash is a definition of both functions and data. So you can actually store uh, data as part of a, the hello class, and here's a, just raw data, cell.a, cell.b, then we have things that are dependent, so if you change, if you, if you use a somewhere else and you modify a, it doesn't propagate to its destination. So that's bad if you want to make it procedural. So, uh, so that's where we came up with um, properties, which are property with a name and a default value. And dependable means, yes, uh, if I change the property, it, it propagates to wherever it's used in the rest of Touch Designer. Um, and uh, so that's, that's, that's good. Um, uh, and then uh, to do stored properties, this Oh, right, right. So properties normally aren't kept when you save the tow file. You have to, but stored properties will be saved uh, when you um, restart, close, uh, and then restart the designer. Okay, so um, as it turns out, I don't use these very often, but uh, the other developers do a lot, so it's just a you know, different style. Uh, but that's another place to hold data. Um, and then um, the New replace, which we introduced a couple of years ago, was the custom parameters. So yeah, you just create the variable as a custom parameter and so on. So um, and, uh, an example of um, that is um, this thing I use for uh, defining what a movie is. So in various places, this is my personal projects, I, I need a component that defines a uh, movie name, the path to it, it's uh, speed and cropping and in and out points and color adjustments. Basically, it's a it's a definition of a movie and a little bit of processing on it to um, to use. Um, and all this this is only parameters. It's, there's no code in it. There's no there's an icon and that's it. And uh, let me show you uh, how I used to do that. So I used the these components to. Um, define my movies and movie bins and video mixer and all that. Um, in the old days, let me see, do I have it here? Um, yeah, here it is. Um, so let me just pull this over to the side. Um, the way I used to do it is um, I would have a component that, one component for a movie, and inside it I would use tables. So here it is, yeah, the name and the clipping, uh, trend points, and all these 
controls of it, so cropping and gamma correction and all that. Uh, so I used to hold that in, in, in a uh, immune uh, node inside, um, I mean, you that inside the component. And for a movie where I have multiple cue points and I want to define jump points and stuff like that, I had, a, again, a table, Q1, Q2, and start and end points for the, um, uh, for a cube. So I used tables, uh, and I had been doing that since uh, you know, five or seven years or so. So I, in recent times I decided, okay, maybe I should explore using, instead of uh, tables, um, I explore using parameters. So there's a difference of why, why you do it, so let me just bring this up in a few words. So tables are nothing but strings, so you don't know that file is a, a file system pass, you don't, you don't know that start is a floating point number. You don't know that triple is a, 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 a um, boolean toggle. They're just strings. So unfortunately, at this point, um, all the cells in a DAD are strings. Now, we're, we've been talking for a lot of years about uh, allowing uh, cells of um, tables to be other things like uh, floats and uh, all sorts of Python type of, uh, data types. But uh, we haven't done that yet. Um, maybe in a couple of years, but at this point, um, the kind of the recent thing that we did to extend this was to uh, make them uh, understand the Unicode, uh, as well as just regular uh, ASCII, but um, tables is a pretty good way I've used it before. So in the case of Python, though, you have all the same kind of things here. You have a file, and you have a title, and so on, but in, in, with, with uh, parameters, they're typed, you know, Python type. They're strictly controlled. So the play is only on and off. It's not floating point number. It's not a string. So they're typed, and you can impose like lower and upper limits on it because with parameters you can say anything above zero, up to ten. Um, so they're they're very um, um, strongly typed. And at first I was against it because I was more of a free flowing, I don't care guy. But after a while, I realized that it's, it's actually a good thing to be able to force it. And the other thing is, um, you can put expressions in these things, and you can't put expressions there. You can you have labels. Um, so yes, you have a name, but you have a, an English label that can be more explicit than shorthand. So there's a lot of reasons why you want to use parameters. The advantage of uh, uh, a table itself is that it's, it's more lightweight, like this is just a string, and the name is just a string. So in the case of um, a parameter, it's a little bit more heavyweight, a little bit, but it's not uh, that, much, uh, not that much impact. So for instance, if we go to uh, speed as a uh, parameter, um, to, uh, the, the definition of a parameter includes its, um, uh, its, its name, it's like Python name, it a uh, label, um, whether it's enabled or not, whether it's read-only or not, da, 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 and then it default value, range, min, range max. So there's more information here per parameter. So sometimes you don't care. But uh, I think the impact on computers now, because they're fast enough, um, the extra load of a parameter is not that high compared to just a one string in a cell or two strings in a cell. So, it's a, a good trade-off, I think. Okay, so from here on in, I'm going to show you more um, things that use custom parameters. So let's jump over to you. Um, yeah, more parameters. Um, 
I want to have a short shorthand way to refer to parameters that are inside the component. So, um, so let's see. Um, I'm going to do this. Let's, uh, hang on, I'm going to cheat here for a second. Yeah. Okay. So inside here, I want to control. Uh, let's say the noise on joint. Let's say I want to control the, uh, the this this amplitude using a variable inside that I want to hide from the user. So uh, an easiest way of doing it is to uh, just create a, uh, let's say, a base component here. And I'm just call it IPAR for internal parameters. And create something in here like a custom parameter called uh, So let's look at a different ways to um, refer to it. Um, so one way is to bring up the evaluate data again. And uh, if you want to refer to it, you can go um, op ipar dot par dot um, Okay, so I got that. So fine, that's that's to me, that's too much typing. And if I if you go somewhere else in the component, I, it's not IPAR anymore. It's dot dot slash IPAR or whatever to build a path to it. I don't like even seeing this here. So I came up with a nice cheat, um, which is using extensions. So the cheat goes something like this. You can go up to the um, top level here and uh, go to the extensions page. And um, well, one way of doing it is just make an extension that points to the parameters of that IPAR that I just showed you. So extensions really are, um, what you put here for the object is, it's a pointer to a thing. In the case, normally with an extension, it's a pointer to um, a, a DAB containing the class definition. So here I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna say, oh, op, um, zip dot, oops, dot slash uh, IPAR, so that's what, um, quotes. Uh, okay, and then dot. So that refers to the component that's inside, but I want to just also refer to its parameters. So I just put dot par, and I'll call this um, um, my effect internal effect. <coughs> Effect. So, and then I click on initialize, and so from now on, inside I can uh, I guess go to val. Uh, now I can type, type something much simpler. Um, extension dot um, <coughs> i effect dot m. Okay, so that. Um, so that um, comes up to the same thing. So it's the extension called I effect, and that thing points directly to the parameters of I par. So it points to all the parameters. So here I can just I effect dot amp. So that's the concise notation that I can use to uh, refer to um, internal parameters that um, you know I can uh, build from. Okay. Um, Okay, so from here, then I can put the um, that expression in, same expression, into the noise <coughs> top here, which is uh, amplitude. Put that expression here, and then okay, so there, there we have. Oops, and there we have. Yeah, yeah anyway, so that's controlling the amplitude of noise. Okay, so that's my short notation and. Um, I've hidden it from the outside world, and so and it's uh, actually and it's pretty efficient now because in the last uh, six months, no year actually, we've been working on um, in the exper experimental version of Touch Designer, we've been working on um, uh, uh, speeding up touch in a, a lot of ways. Um, 
I don't want to get into the gory details, but we we sped up exper expressions and parameters a lot, and we sped, sped up uh, yeah in, in many ways. So having um, using ex expressions of in internal parameters is much more efficient than, as it has been. So it's uh, you can re use a lot more freely than you did before. Okay, so um, yeah, I want to look at some of the other examples as well. Okay, um, this is 
other stuff that's on the other. Yeah, it's like here's same kind of thing. I made these read, read only as well, but it's fetching the bit width and height from the expressions and the uh, internal parameters. Uh, I think that's all I want to show here. And I think in this case, there's uh, more of the same. Uh, you know, it's just grabbing file. Yeah, here's one thing. Um, so you can grab parameters from the um, uh, internal parameters. You can grab them. But in the case where the parameter is an operator, you have to put op around it. So you have to put op bracket this, and uh, otherwise it'll get confused. So you have to put op and then the uh, internal uh, parameter name there. Okay, minor detail, but uh, you could do. <coughs> yeah, and I suggest that you go to the uh, wiki page on. And here it goes through the why of it and uh, an example file, but also um, there's a faster way to set it up. Now well, they're both equal. You can do it. You can also set up the internal parameters via the uh, com component editor, which is, let's say, back to here, base. So another way to set it up is um, right click on the base and uh, you know, customize components. And here, you can um, go to the extension code page and type in um, I grid or something. And it'll add, to say add that as internal parameters. And it'll set that up for you right away. So if you don't remember the syntax, you can do it by the component editor. So here's the extension. Like I set it up before. And if it go inside, it creates the one component for you, and uh, with a default value, which you probably end up deleting. Um, but that's it, so you can do it that way. Uh, one thing which I didn't <coughs> go into before, which I think, uh, which one had it? Was it in here? Yeah, right, so what's this stuff in, in the, um, uh, uh, in the viewer of, of the component. Um, it's, it's only for every internal parameter there is um, a row. It's evaluated. Basically it's just up evaluated. So I don't know why I have this in here sometimes. You can just look here. Um, but sometimes I just want to look at it in, in this form. And inside it's all it is is a, a parameter chop. And then uh, Shop two, you yeah, get that the tap that format, and then um, to evaluate strings properly because uh, this is a path, it's not a numbers, and parameter chop only evaluates numbers. So I, anyway, this is a way of getting the um, using this evaluate that and some funky expression gives me all this stuff evaluated whether it's a string or other numbers. Um, so this. Here is uh, right. So I'm basically taking the eval and making this the viewer of this component. So I went to the component and went to the comment page and the operator viewer. I just said dot slash eval and that uh, let's say we made a part one. Yeah, if I wanted to be that. So um, often I take some node that's inside and make it the viewer for the component. Okay. Um, that's all I want to talk about there. Yeah. Oh yes, uh, one thing which I, I use a lot too, and I, I once you start building projects where there's uh, lots of parts to it, um, it's kind of messy navigating around, and um, I, I use these, these layouts, which are kind of like tabs in a um, web browser, but basically you can pick a place like here and say I want to go, go here off and create a new layout plus and say okay it'll be scrubber and I'll create a, uh, that as a location to jump to. So it's just jump to locations for um, parts of your project. So how many people use layout by the way? Oh, 
Okay, so about a third. <coughs> Not bad. Um, okay, so yeah, so yeah. So next point was too that I, um, uh, in terms of extensions, I, I uh, don't use extensions um, for data, I'll use it for code. And my style and, and the stuff that I make, which is what you'll see, is um, if, I, if I go to, like, here's an example, I'm going into this extension here called MB Play. Um, I don't use um, the data part. I put all my data into internal parameters or somewhere else, but I never put it here. It's just code here. These are just all functions. So that's just a point I want to make about how I use uh, extensions although most people use it with, uh, with data. It just, to me, it just gets in the way because it's not uh, visible. Uh, the data is not easily printable um, when, when you have it sitting inside here. I'd rather see it um, live in, um, in, a, in the parameter list. Parameters, or you can drive it through um, the internal 
Python calls. So all of these things I'm doing in the UI, well, some of them, uh, you can do through the movie players. Sorry, here's the, here's the actual component. Uh, yeah, right. So a lot of them, a lot of things you can do by here, by right? doing a queue. Let me see. Go to time, yeah. So basically, go to time and play and so on. So scrubbing is done through this as well. So uh, I try to make it, design the components so they can control from Python, from the parameters and via user interface. Okay. Um, okay, so this thing is uh, got inside. Mm, is there anything else I want to show you from the outside as well? Yeah. So being a master class, this is what I want to show you, show you the insights uh, more. So this is, it uses um, internal parameters like crazy. Um, yeah, so here's, here they are. <laughs> okay, so um, I really am building strings up from smaller parts and, and so on. So the true length, yes, is grabbing, it's doing expression from data I get somewhere else, uh, and the path of the queues, so each queues are, uh, oh yeah, so I just want to show you too that the, um, the, the queues are um, in the, the, remember the MV movie spec component, which defines what the uh, movie spe uh, specifications are inside them, um, instead of having a queue table, I have queues, um, Remember in the other one, it showed a, there's a table of the settings and then there's a table of the queues. I also decided I try to um, put each queue as a um, component. So inside queues, uh, I have one component per queue. And I thought, first I thought, oh, this is a little bit overkill, but I wanted to try it anyways. So these are my four queues for the movie player. So Yeah, like um, for instance, uh, Q2, which is that thing. Um, it's so, but you can play around with it more. So I here I, I can just say I want to make the start time a little bit earlier. So you're just going to a parameter and changing it, and so that changes the start time of the uh, of that queue. So I find better for just playing around with. And again, these things are strings, and these are flags, and these are floating point numbers, and then this is a menu, so I can, I can um, uh, specify more carefully what all the controls are for, for, for what the specs are for each queue. Um, yeah, and, and, then, and then in order to kind of build up um, this interface here, um, well, I'll get that to that in a second. Uh, I'm using the off find. Uh, actually, I'll show you now. So when I'm building up, let's say for instance this strip of buttons, um, I need to get a list of all the queues. So um, this thing called QInfo is a component that fishes in here and basically makes a table from all the components. So I'm doing that, here's the table again, and I'm using that using a uh, opfine that so I use upline all over the place to grab things. In uh, <coughs> in this case, I'm finding just a queue list of where all the paths are to all the queues that are currently displayed, their names and their start and lengths in table format, and uh, so that's built up in a table. And then I make that table. I sort it. In some cases, yeah, here it's sorted by time. And uh, then I make this available to stuff elsewhere. Um, I forget what this did. Okay, anyways. So when I'm um, building, for instance, this, um, the part of the interface, which is the strip here, for instance, um, I'm using, I'm grabbing that table 
and I'm using a rel replicator component to replicate each part. And I do the same thing with um, the strip at the bottom where I'm basically grabbing the icons. I'm grabbing the same table from wherever it was. And yes, you can see the path, how I use the um, parent.mb play. So it's basically mb play is this thing. And I'm getting the operator called qinfo, qtable, that's where I'm getting it from. So that's, I use this uh, form of it very frequently. Where first you get the parent and then find something within it. And that's as short as I can come up with as an expression. Okay, um, let's see, do I want to get, don't need to get into that any further. Um, geez, Windows wants me to restart my computer. Fucking <laughs> sucks. Remind me, remind me later. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Okay. Um, Okay, right, and so um, another thing with driving a uh, movie player from the outside, uh, these things, these, these, let me bring these buttons up. Um, so for instance, um, Hugo, all right, so this is a, a way of driving, uh, one way of driving the, um, uh, the player. If you just click on this, it's going to uh, go to a target queue number two and go to, and then pause. And that's when I go on to off, and then when I let go, it'll start playing. So uh, this should, let's see if the timer's there. Uh, if I click here, it goes to uh, the beginning, and then when I let go, it comes on. So this is calling um, the component via its extension. The extension called uh, go to no no this isn't using the extension this is using the parameter on the other side so this is basically clicking stuff in movie player's uh, interface it's clicking basically setting this value here and clicking here and then clicking there so you don't have to do it that way but um, I, I I like doing that sometimes the more traditional way is it, it's uh, is to use call an extension which I think is done by, uh, oh yeah, here. That's it. Here's some code which is called the extension. <coughs> right, it's just basically, the, the calls the uh, go to time thing, basically. Uh, and uh, one means play, so when I run that, right click, run script, goes to second number three and plays. So that's another way of controlling it from the other side. Uh, this thing is designed also to uh, use ramps from, um, um, from, from anywhere. So this is the Ableton Link uh, shop, which, um, yeah, they basically get you get your timing ramps from Ableton and you can uh, connect it to the input of this uh, component by just directly, and it'll drive it directly from <coughs> Whatever queue is selected, it'll play that. So if I go to then that queue, it'll play that at the same amount of time, and then that at the same amount of time. Seems, assuming that the reading keeps up, it's jumping too ahead too fast. Okay, that's good. So in, inside the way that's uh, happening. Um, okay, let's let's just actually look at some of these nodes. Um, how many of you built your own movie player, by the way? Because I, I know we all have because, yeah. <laughs> Everybody, because we don't have a movie player until now. Okay. Um, I'm hoping that, uh, like, I, I, I'm sure you've done a lot of what I'm showing you here, and you might have done it different ways, and you probably have some better ways uh, than me of, of, of doing it. And uh, I finally put this out just so we can have something out there that you grab and pillage. Um, but uh, as you know, making movie players is pretty uh, intricate. You have a lot of things to think about, reloading movies and stalling and all that kind of stuff. So um, uh, 
this this is kind of like a, a culmination of just Greg solving it for himself. Um, so yeah, here's the movie player, but uh, his frame number is generated from down here. So this whole shop network generates uh, the frames based on whether you're playing beats or free running timer. Um, I have it set up so that you have a separate um, movie movie um, top just to get its um, length, sample rate, uh, aspect ratio, and uh, and that's basically just to get this is kind of a passive thing where you're grabbing information from the movie and sticking the data into the um, uh, um, internal parameters. So this information, length, and sample rate, true length, via some uh, somewhere somewhere else, uh, it it's, it sets the rate and length here. And from that, um, it builds up uh, all this other information about uh, the true length from a fraction, you know, a ratio, and uh, and so on. And so, all this kind of information is built based on raw parts that are uh, here, like the cubing additive, and so on. Um, Yeah, and this it's this stuff that actually is used to actually play the movie from the internal parameters. So you're separating the investigation of the movie and from the playing of the movie. Um, let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, back out here. Mm, right, the usual thing for playing movies, you, you grab the you grab the audio and either send it to speakers or just send it out to a mixer. Right. Turn it off. Um, and the, the way I've kind of built it as well is, is um, like here, here, here's a bunch of other movie specs here, which are just the settings for the, for the movies. Um, I just can just drag and drop it onto the thing and it'll not work. <laughs> I like fuck something up on the inside. There we go. Cheat what happened. Okay. Um, right. So you can so you can play it by uh, drag and dropping the um, movie um, specs from it, or from the movie file in top. You can drag and drop this in, just from the movie the, the top, or from um, the file system. Just take it off the file system and drop it in there. So it handles all those cases. Um, inside it handles the cases via um, the, this, um, well it's basically doing it via uh, a bunch of DATs and also the timer job. So uh, next thing I want to show you is um, how two, two ways in which timer job is used um, in kind of unusual fashion, but timer job is really a, like a state machine when you, um, you have, uh, when you have multiple segments pass it to the timer job, it's kind of like a state machine in that you do something and you wait, and then you do something else and then you wait and so on. So um, this thing, uh, basically you have to close a movie and then you have to you know, close a movie, shut a bunch of things down, then you um, open the movie, make sure all the uh, frames are preloaded, and then you expose it to the outside world. So you have to fade it out for 15 frames, unload it, um, uh, for two frames and then initialize some extension and load it and then you waiting, you're waiting until the thing loads, uh, opens the movie, then you load it, preloading pre frames and so on, and then there's a delay of three frames and then you fade it back up again so it goes black and then goes quiet, comes back up again. So that, what I was showing you just a second ago, out from the outside, is, um, yeah, so when you that back in. You got phase out and phase in, so that's that's what this thing is doing. So the fade out, fade in. So that's the one you, you can actually trigger it by hand. You can kind of watch what happens with the timer chop when you initialize it and start it. Yeah, so all this thing is happening pretty fast, but it's uh, basically going through all these stages. The segment down here is the um, segment number uh, that's being played. So if I click here again, you can see it counts up from 1 to 10. Yeah, zero to ten. Now, if you um, this is a 
another cheat. If you want to watch it in slow motion, you can set the speed to 0.1, and you can go through this initialization phase at a much slower speed, so you can go initialize and start and to go. Here it goes, segment one. Oh, now it's doing segment two, do, 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 do. Now it's waiting and going, and then fade back in. Okay, so it's kind of cheating, uh, examining it, but the more cheating you can do, the better. Well, with some things. <laughs> um, okay, so oh yeah, here's a massive amount of crazy, and I'm sure anybody who's made their own movie player has a crazy amount of logic. And here's done by the timer chop. So I found that this it was very useful to do it this way versus having a bunch of chops and uh, other chops and logic and scripts and triggers and all that kind of stuff. It was all done through through here. Um, again, it's kind of like an experiment that I uh, took me about a, three or four weeks to to get this right. A lot of issues, but now that it's here, you can go village it. Um, so there's another place in here that has. Right in the UI of it. So hang on. Uh, right, it's this thing here. Uh, let's see, yeah, let's put a different movie in there. It's dead. Let's see again so we can see it stepping properly. Yeah, so uh, these buttons here are uh, interesting because you can hold it down, just click one frame at a time, but if you uh, hold it down, it steps forward. A frame every six six of a second, and if you just drag off, it starts playing a bit faster, and so on. And you go backwards by the same thing, step backwards a frame at a time, which is also why I think VLC and QuickTime suck. <laughs> uh, yeah, and same thing on the negative side. So, so rather than doing some funky logic, I did it with. Uh, Hammer job as well, so let's go inside and put this kind of over here. And that's in this, no, it's in the play controls here. Okay, so here they are, the plus and minus button. So, yeah, so here's the timer, timer job here. And um, I'm stepping forward or backwards, so that's determined by whether you hit the uh, minus or plus, or plus button. So that's basically, this just sets a value of step size. And lo and behold, look, I, I'm not using internal parameters here, it's just a, an adapt. So I'm just using things that are as I feel. It's easier to set this up than internals. Um, okay, so what's this doing? Oh, just starts scrubbing and blah, 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 blah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, here, this is the main thing that sets the game, though, how far off I'm how far off the button I am, the U value, and that's my step size. So that's, anyway, so that's, um, let me click on it, uh, right. Right, so it's, that's time, it's, so the loop is uh, six of a second, right. So this is just a single segment timer, but as I go faster, uh, oh yes, oh yeah. Oh yeah, because I can't see it. All right, just have to be Okay. Oh yeah, it's displaying negative. I'm not saying that. There we go. Faster, slower. Right, so there's some math stuff to, to do it. So from here, from timer job, every time it does a cycle. So timer job is set to cycle. Yeah, here. And let's see what happens when I press plus. Yeah, so setting the length, or the length of the cycle here, yeah, that's right. So I'm shortening the length based on how far off I am from the um, uh, center of the button. Okay. So, like, it's just a, another kind of cheap use of uh, timer. Uh, and here's, here, here is where it's actually driving the timeline via the phase, the phase value, which is basically where the scrubber where it is. Okay, so I'll stop there. Um, next. I'm going, I'm going in a random order here now. Okay, yeah, so that's, how am I doing for time? <coughs> oh, not bad. Okay, so the next component
component I want to show you. I think I'm finished here. Yeah, actually, I, I do want to show you one more thing. Um, this, this movie engine is uh, a variation of a movie player. Hmm. So this, if you look at the uh, performance monitor, you'll see when this is running, you'll see too much stuff cooking. If you want this to be running kind of standalone or headless without a UI. Um, so I didn't have a good way of, of kind of shutting things down in here. So um, inside here, um, all the user interface parts are, are up here. Uh, the rest is functional. Oh yeah, up here too, I think. But um, so basically I took the movie player and I cut, copy and pasted it and renamed it and renamed it so it's a uh, clone master, um, and and I just removed the UI and it runs faster, so and everything else is still there. You still need to movie switching, and you still need other stuff. Oh, yeah, this keyboard controls for hotkeys. Um, so that's it, that's it for this guy. Yeah. Okay. And what do I have on the input? The audio and the, uh, yeah, just it stays. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to fool around with, so I, yeah, I made this kind of over the summer, and then, and I had this time base going for a bunch longer. Uh, started a while back, and then I abandoned it. I posted it on the forum, but it was kind of busted, and then that was in the 10,000 series of Touch Designer. And then uh, I posted it uh, a couple of days ago, again, in this newer format, uh, which is much better. And it's uh, based on the 30,000 um, uh, experimental series. Um, so let's see, what should I talk about here? Uh, yeah, I guess. How many, how many, have you made, how, how many, how many have you made your own timeline tool since we never had one? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Over there, that's where I did cash, yeah, okay. Lesser number, because it's harder, right? <laughs> it's more of a pain in the ass. Um, actually, I started, the reason I, I made this, and I, I, I kind of, it's kind of, I mean, derivatives should be pumping this stuff out, but you guys make it faster than we do, and you need it more earlier than we do, then and we can produce it, but we, we um, and again, this is for your, your, your pillaging, uh, and it's using what I consider mo modern best practices, but uh, let's see, where do I go from here? Uh, oh yeah, so the reason I, I made this was, uh, I went for, uh, went to see uh, State for Night Festival uh, a couple of, two, two, two years ago, it's just a year and a month ago, uh, there's an amazing piece made by uh, some D3 guys. Uh, what, was it, what was their production company? I forget. Anyway, it was a beautiful physical thing in a big space, and, uh, but it was running off of a, just a long timeline with about 10 channels on it, controlling the strobe lights and colors and speeds of things. And I thought, okay, that's, that's in the ran for 15 minutes. And that's what the timeline was. And I thought, okay. I should be able to. I should be able to do that in touch. And it took a while to do it, but um, this, this is kind of like in the same vein of that, of that, that piece. Uh, so let's see. I'll just show you some of the features from the outside, and then um, some of the uh, architecture on the inside. <clears throat> so um, so it has yes, it has a scrub bar and multiple layers, and. Um, you know, a scene is basically one composition. Um, the layers have elements on them, and uh, and yes, you can scrub through it and set uh, in and out point for um, sorry in and out point for playback, and you can set the in and out point just for a viewer, or you can use the uh, roller wheel and so on. Um, and um, on the right, I've always put uh, I try to keep. This is an experiment to try and make it look a bit like a touch designer, so, uh, like network editor. I always try to put um, parameters on the right of stuff that you selected. So indeed, scene one is the all the scene controls, and this initialize button and start button, for instance, uh, is 
here in the UI, but it's also here in the control. In fact, these buttons here are just triggering these, these um, pulse parameters. Um, so, let me see. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, it's just how the UI is set up. Like, you can make it whatever, split it differently and all that. So I tried to proceduralize as much of the UI as I could. Um, and then for layers, the same idea. Each layer has uh, some stuff that's um, controllable from here. And sometimes when there's no other UI for expanding, for instance, I have to do it by the parameters always. So some, you know, something's missing. But I always try to implement it first with parameters. Uh, same thing with uh, elements. Uh, the element has uh, you know, start time and time, and how they get buttered up with other elements and so on. Fade in, fade out. In this case, this element type is a movie file type and has its own um, specs here, which point to the, um, again, one of the movie spec components that I have, which happens to be inside the element. Um, and, and right, I can bring up, here's a movie spec for this, uh, this element here. So I try to be kind of consistent with what I built with the movie player. Uh, and, oh yeah, so these are, uh, the gray ones are movies. Uh, the, yeah, these, this one's the audio. Well, anyway, you, get, you know, you know the audio file I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna replace it. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so and I, I just I, I didn't know what other ones to put in here. So this is like that one that generate as a generative one. So yeah, so and, so yeah, here's your default generative thing, and you can put your own stuff in the generative one. But it does have you, know, you start again and stuff like that. And then this has a, this text crappy text generator. Uh, and uh, it's kind of one of each down here, and the red ones are actually other scenes. So this this one you can actually mix from. It says um, scene. I can mix from scene zero, which is a yeah another scene in here as well. I'll show you in a sec. But this is actually the the a pre. So there you can, can be kind of recursive. You can put a scene in a scene, and so the other scene happens to be. Um, Uh, yeah, right. Here's the here's the other scene and so on. Um, right. So this thing is calling that thing. Um, what else from the outer outer side of the interface? Um, so the one thing which does this doesn't have is uh, keyframing. So there's no keyframing yet, and it'll probably take a while to to, to produce it. But it's, that's probably the most vitally important next thing. It's a trick you're getting all these things right because you have to make sure that when one click ends, you go straight to the beginning of the next one, there's all sorts of other things. Uh, I'll show you how I end up doing that with uh, multiple uh, movie players. Um, but that's, that's that. So, um, yeah, okay, so the approach I was taking for uh, building this was um, every entity, which is the scene, the layer, and the element and the effect, uh, I wanted them all to be components. And so it's like, it's not tables, it's, it's all components. So that's how I made it. And, uh, so we're inside the scene now and um, every layer is a layer component based on a master here. And the layers have inside it um, elements and this is based on the master elements and so on. So, um, yeah, as you create delete them, they just stuck, get stuck in the network in a, a vertical place. Um, you know, it's kind of an experiment to just how do you create components and delete them, and how do you order them, and how do you name them? Do you name them by their operator name, or do you refer to them by uh, the text name, and so on? So, um, um, so here's where I want to get into uh, the use of the um, opfine. Yeah, the op, the, the find uh, uh, that. Okay, so 
everything's running off of a timer job, like a one huge timer job, which is running all the, all the segments. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay well, UI problem when there's lots of stuff. Yeah, but anyway, uh, every um, every element has a timer, and have, I happen to just be doing it right from one timer job. So how do I generate this list of all the time, uh, elements to play? I do it via um, inside the elements table here. I'm generating this huge table, and I'm using inside of the elements table. So I want to find every all the elements in the whole system. And why am I doing that, or how am I doing that? I'm using an op find that yes, and uh, and uh, I'm looking for uh, first of all I want to find every I want to look at everywhere inside inside parent dot scene. So scene is the parent shortcut of uh, this whole this thing here. Parameters here it is scene yeah parent shortcut of scene. So it goes inside slash time base slash scene looks at where. Uh, looks inside there, and um, filters um, is looking for all of the everything inside this uh, inside scene that has a parent shortcut called element. And of course, as you mentioned, the elements have their parent shortcut set up. So that's what it's generating here. So it's generating uh, the the name, the path to it, and beginning and length uh, times. And that's being and, and that's for the timer jobs uh, playing the playing the start, basically the counter of time. And inside the up line that I add two columns, uh, begin and length, because by default I selected the name and the path, the first two columns, and then I wanted to create the other two. So um, here I just add begin and length as new columns, and uh, I return, yeah, right, it's straight from the, um, the, um, the element start time, and, and this is all from its, um, uh, yeah, start time, computed end time, these are uh, external parameters, not internal ones, but this is generated from uh, the uh, element components, and, and I want to exclude a few so they don't play and so on, but anyway. Uh, let's see, sorted by time, and that's how it comes out down here. So when we go to uh, an element, let's go to let's say the first. Let's go to the first element. Go to the second element here. Okay, and I want to watch its time. So if I bring it up. Viewer, and I go to scrubber. I can just drag it. Yeah, here it is. So if I just scrub, here's here's the element I'm talking about. So if I just let it go, and you'll see the timer counting up here. So it grabs the part of the timer shop that it needs for this element, and then when it's done, it goes to done. So let me see what happened before. Oops. Uh, yeah, this is. Yeah, it's timer active, yes, it's counting, and then when it's done, it's running, yes, and then it's, uh, and it's done after, it's whatever seconds, 8.3 seconds. Um, okay, so the timer extract is just pulling, well, it's just doing some nutty channel stuff, which is no other way, grabbing the whole thing and picking up the part that is relevant. And now putting a, a chop with the right channels that goes to. Uh, so every element has this available to it at the all times. So it does what it wants with the generative stuff, it does what it wants when it starts and triggers the beginning, initializes and plays it. So right now I'd say this, there's two things here the uh, two types of uh, components. Uh, one of them I call free running, and, and the other one I call deterministic. So if you scrub everywhere, anywhere, It'll, it'll actually be playing the exact correct frame of the um, uh, of that movie because it's deterministic. I just park myself there, 
In the case of generative things, he can't do that. It has to, you have to start it from the beginning of it and let it play itself out. So you can't scrub it, because yeah, it kind of messes it up. Well, in this case, it does. But for instance, a particle system, you have to run it from the beginning at the right speed. Uh, let's see what else is going on in here. Um, yeah, okay, so here's another thing about the architecture of it too, like mixing stuff. I wanted this to be kind of open enough that um, you could um, make your own, or make your own, make your own variation of it. So I have no idea what combination of layers you want to do, this over this, inside that, with that, inside, like, it has to be very generalized. So there's no kind of, I didn't want to put that in the panel UI where you add layers and mixing things, do it yourself kind of thing. So you. You go inside uh, scene one, and you just say, "I want, uh, I want the video from the first layer. I want the video from the second and third, and I want to do that over that, and that over that kind of thing. Or that and comp being a screen, a screen B over it with the text over it. And the same thing with the audio. I've got to get the audio from where I get it from layer one and layer four, and so on, and mix that out, and then." So, I don't know, so this, the idea here is that you just kind of make your own composite network. Keep it very test designery open. Uh, so that's kind of it for that part of it. Um, yeah, and, and, and so I, I, as much as possible, and I think, I, I, I bet you you're going this way as well, but using um, parameter components as much as possible to um, yeah, to, to be part of the UI, which is here. So that what we see here is this uh, concoction of uh, parameter components and ex crazy expressions to select which one is being the current one, yeah, element seven, or this one down here. Yeah, so this crazy expression, which uses internal parameters, uh, is used to actually build that string up Unfortunately, now, like I said, it's uh, much faster than it was in uh, the official version. <clears throat> um, okay. Uh, oh yeah. So there's a, one other thing too, but uh, connecting user interfaces together. Mm -hmm. Let's see. gadgets here, this one and this one. So they're pretty homemade, um, but um, the idea is that if you click in the middle third, scrolls it, right third, moves this in, right left third, that, that, and moves the start. Um, what I wanted to point out was um, this is really a gadget that controls view range start and end here. So really what you're controlling is this this um, parameter here and here via these these gadgets. So yeah, again, as much as possible, I make the gadget UI affect parameters, not tables or anything, just as much as possible. Same thing with this thing up here. Um, and so we go to inside this thing. Um, okay, I wonder how many people know this trick. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's 
so it's useful sometimes if you want to know and it's and, and then any part of any application you, you just kind of put your cursor on it go f9 or f10 f10 puts you inside the component f9 puts you outside something like that so uh, yeah i, I keep, keep, keep forgetting myself but uh, it's kind of if you're if you're just looking at something and saying i don't want to really go inside and look around i just want to Um, right, so let's go, let's go to that, um, this, this gadget. Right, view range. Inside it is, uh, yeah. Oh, man, talk about a nutty way of doing icon design. <laughs> I have a circle. Uh, I have a, another one. I can pass another circle one so they get added together. Then, then I reflect it. I do composite of it over itself, but scale by minus one. <laughs> Is anybody following this? <laughs> Is it crazy? This is this. By doing this, I don't call the programmers in the middle of the night. Yeah, so that's the background of it. So thank God for the circle top that I where I can do a triangle. And, which is one of the things, it is one of the things that bugs me about uh, touch design too, is that the, we still don't have good, good ways of generating in uh, some tops, just simple shapes, sure it's a circle, sure, but the, just generating the simple, really simple shapes, or even just drawing things, just gesturing things, or it's not easy, so I apologize for that, and I uh, hope to come up with kind of a pattern top or something, or a shape top, but um, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, so that this, this, uh, so let's look at the, hmm, what am I doing here? Yeah, it's just basically this dot here that, uh, yeah, how long? I don't think you need to understand that right now. And then um, 
for the longest time, we didn't have any way to push data. So this is where the execute um, DAS come in. Uh, Anal execute, shop execute, um, parameter execute now, um, that execute. It's what I call a push system. An event happens, you get the data and the, and the callbacks of these DAS, and then you push data somewhere, like into internal parameter, and then the rest pulls. So it's like a, a blend of a push system and a pull system. Before we were trying to do a pu push in touch design using chops, it was very successful. We, um, we had the override chop and we had all sorts of kind of clunky things. We're using triggers. And I'm sure some of you used touch for a while really know um, what that what I'm talking about in terms of pushing data through from events. But uh, now that the execute dads are around, uh, they're, they're a lot better at um, pushing things around. So I don't know if you have any thoughts about that. We can talk about it in the Q&A. Um, and I think that's kind of all that I wanted to talk about. Uh, tonight, do, 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 do. Yeah, well, I try to design for touch screens when I'm doing it, but um, I don't want to talk about much about that. Uh, and my bad practice, well, the only thing that I, I'm not doing here in a lot of these components is I'm using a lot of uh, expressions in, in parameters for positioning things. And uh, this is kind of being superseded by um, what's called anchors. Uh, does anybody use anchors in? Oh, you do? Okay, great. Um, so one way to lay out all your um, UI is using expressions to figure out this is beside that, this is on top of that, this is 50% of that. And that's what a lot of these expressions are. And uh, anchors, which is, um, I don't even know where they are, panel, uh, layout. Oh yeah, they're all here, right? Um, horizontal over, yeah, this is all the anchoring stuff, which um, was designed by, uh, Ivan Del Sol and Rob Barrows and Jared uh, with uh, you know, other people in the R&D group. And it's kind of a nice way to fit things together. I don't know, have, have, have you had much success with them? Yeah, okay. So I, I need to learn that stuff and uh, retrofit it into some of these things. So anyway, as I said, this, 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 um, uh, this one's in the palette and the uh, Uh, time bases in the uh, the, the um, forum. Uh, I think that's it. So I think I should stop soon because it's uh, twelve thirty. That's good enough. And uh, maybe take some questions. And uh, yeah, that's it. So yeah. Uh, about multiplayer. Yeah. Uh, what is your method to generate the uh, thumbnails when you add the new points? Oh, well, how, how do I generate the thumbnails? Uh, well, yeah, I, I used, um, well, first of all, the op find that to get all the, no, uh, no. yeah, down, you're talking about, uh, well, this is actually make, make some again, uh, you, right there, right here, you, you. okay, so, um, yeah, so, first of all, just getting the cues in table, but um, how do I do it? Yeah, hmm, well, I'm not sure if I'm just answering your question completely, but yes, I'm using a repl replicator component on a master, and inside here is just a, it's just a movie file that parked at the frame that we need for the, for that uh, image, and shrink it a bit, and um, does that answer your question though? So I see that on your base, you choose to have that as a background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's really yeah. You create for, for every thumbnail, you create this uh, movie file. Yes, yes, yeah. It's, uh, I, I, I sometimes, well, I shrink it down too, so uh, it doesn't take much memory. So uh, oh, I'm using one eighth of the resolution. So its resolution is 160 by 90. So it doesn't take much memory, only gets read in once. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, only get right, right in one, so it's pretty lightweight. Um, but that's when, when you have a bunch of them, of cues and 
it does pause the system, uh, you know, doing the, so it's, it has a little bit of an impact. So I try to make sure that my tune in, my tune page, I have a frame read timeout, which means I don't wait for the movie to load, it just loads when it's ready. So uh, that's one way of making it uh, not pause. Yeah. Uh, any other, Richard? And you'll hear next. Uh, just the components. You, the old like you do put some crams there so you can pour it to someone, which is really how I try to use my work for Oh, yeah. But when that scales across multiple machines, that whole system kind of falls down because when you start to push, then you have to start to keep bringing chops back in and start to push there. So I really want plan to kind of have a way where a components, a components parameters could be sent from one instance to another in real time. Oh yeah, like a, from, so yeah, the question is um, a component on another, <coughs> another, from one process to another, to another process and have its custom parameters pushed out. Because yeah, you're saying you have to take those uh, parameters, turn them into a chops, and then send the chops over to the other machine or the other process and then force that into well, he, well, you do what you do with it there, but yes, that's right. So, yeah, that's right. I I, um, I had the same experience when trying to get parameters from one place into another place um, in another application. So I don't I don't know how we would. So at the moment, like if you so if you have, um, for example, I have like let's say I have like loads of feeds and they're going from different machines. Yeah. And then that feed is like the components, and I want to keep that. Put a replicate so I just have lots of feeds of all different components rather than in right. a table, the data on the table. Right, right. But then getting that data across to another instance is yeah. quite a, a task. Yeah, so you kind of want um, cloned components, remotely cloned components. Is that what I put that on the wish list? <laughs> yeah, I don't put on your wish list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Yeah, we want yeah, we want to have some better ways of doing remote cloning of stuff. Um, uh, well, actually, we we, yeah, we have a way sort of on the drawing board. Um, we're calling it a process component too, where one component starts another process without going messing around but in the windows. But that's something different than what you're describing. It's like yeah, and 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 you can. Um, Get data from one process to another using the um, table. Out. No, it's the um, data out. Like that. Yeah, that out, data in thing. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, on the list, then. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's like yeah, you know.
So um, that's the, when you have a whole bunch of timers going off, it's really impossible because it takes too many milliseconds. So we have this thing called timer me now. We're just in the stage of testing the is, is implementation of it with the original that you're using to make sure all the features are there. But he's found lots of ways to kind of streamline it so timers better. But it's been a, a bit of a, a limitation once you have lots of timers. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, it'll, it'll be the, the, the uh, faster timer will be out in uh, maybe a um, month or so. Uh, yeah. And I, I know it's 10 times faster. Okay, here, the, I'll clarify it. Um, in Touch 88, it's about 10 times faster than Touch 88's version of it. We've been improving it slowly, bit by bit. But the next batch of improvements will be pretty significant. Okay, so, question over somewhere that, yeah. Yes, I have two, two questions. Is, uh, is about uh, text. Yeah. Because uh, there is two, for me, two problems, because uh, sometimes, I need to put text on the movie on, on the movie player. So first is for us in France, it will be difficult to ignore, not have Unicode text. So it's, it can change very good. Yeah, I, can yeah. use it. I can use Python, but it's quite complicated. Yeah, uh, right, you can't, because uh, dots aren't unit text, and parameters don't have unit text, and nothing. Uh, we're, we're, we'll show you tomorrow something. At the end of tomorrow, okay. It's the same. It was a with a path on Macintosh. Yeah. If it's the path. Some, if it's some, file name pass. And yes. File pa file pass. Yes. Uh, any any copy and paste text stuff from documents that are come to tomorrow. The, okay. At the end of the day. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Since you have a lot of uh, components that are like derivative from a container and base, uh, wouldn't it be nice uh, to like the question mark to lead to the help not for the container but for the custom component that built upon this? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Right to go to a location where the help is for that uh, that thing is on the internet or whatever. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. So we're. Yeah, again, we'll talk about that more, a bit more tomorrow because we're, uh, we're trying to make the experience of using Touch as I am more integrated here so there's more stuff that you're accessing that's on our upcoming website, which is being re revamped. But the um, point is that, uh, um, yeah, we're, and, and we're, we, we're redesigning the, uh, the palette so it's a bit more thing and goes into GitHub and more and so on. So. There's a lot of um, things that we're trying to achieve at the same time to make um, user made work of custom components look more accessible. Yeah. That's a good question. Um, anything else? Okay, well, thanks a lot for uh, sticking through it. Mm -hmm. good. Good. Good.